Hi, you boom to you all. One more beautiful time. Grade 11, Science Chapter Number 3, as per the Sri Lankan government school syllabus is in front of you. We have been learning mixtures and this is going to be video number 4. We will talk about solution today. Solution in deep, definitely. At the end of the session, you will understand what is solution and how the solutions made of and what kind of uh, solutions are there and all the information relevant to solutions. In addition to this, you will learn a little more about it. Okay, so get ready to learn the session. Solute and solvent of a solution. This is what we will understand at the beginning. Now, what is that all about? It was mentioned that a homogeneous mixture is also called a solution. You already know that homogeneous mixtures are always called as solutions. A solution is composed of a solvent and one or more solutes. That says if you see, if you are looking at this picture, there is salt and water. Which one is solvent and which one is solute? We want to understand it. Of the components mixed to form the solution, the component present in excess is the solvent and the rest of the components are solutes. In this example, the solvent is water because that is the excess and the solutes definitely is the salt. Hence, it can be represented as solute plus solvent is equal to solution. To get a solution, you want to have two things. To get a solution, you want to have two things, solute and solvent. It can be more than one solute. Okay. Now, in this example, what we saw, that was a salt and water. That salt become the solute and solvent is water and then after mixing it, this is becoming solution. This can be further understood by paying attention to the solutions used in day-to-day -day life, like salt and water becoming salt solution, copper sulfate and water becoming copper sulfate solution, and sugar and water becomes sugar solution. It's a gentle one, and we understand that. When you say solution, that is homogeneous mixture. Always remember, now... Solubility of a solute is the most important part of the things but I promised that you will understand more further and you will study a little extra. Now your total concentration should be here to understand the solubility of a solute. We will do a couple of beautiful experiments also. Now, what will happen if a small amount of a given solute is added to a solvent? It will dissolve and disappear, right? What quantity of a solute can be dissolved like this in a given volume of the solvent? Let us understand this particular one in a very careful way that first of all, you are adding salt. You are adding salt to the water. Listen to this very carefully. And after that, you are mixing it very nicely and it is dissolving firmly. After that, you are putting little more salt to the same water. First of all, you put one drop. Again, you are putting one more little cup of salt. And again, you are putting third. Now, this is getting dissolved. This is getting dissolved. And when you are putting third time, it is not dissolving into the water. There are pieces. Why is that? Now, this is what we are going to understand. Now, there is an activity in front of you. For that, you need a materials like a beaker, salt, a glass rod. Okay. Now, measure 100 milliliter of water into a clean beaker. So, we are putting 100 milliliter of water over here. And then after that, you see that one? 100 grams of pure salt. That is sodium chloride. That also we took. Now, what we have to do is Add salt little at a time into a beaker of water and stir with the glass rod to dissolve it. We did it and got dissolved. So do not add more salt until the salt added before dissolves completely. 
once the salt what we are putting a little is dissolving completely a little more you're putting and then after that you're repeating it when no more salt dissolves stop adding more salt and weigh the remaining amount of the salt that means you put a little then one stage the salt is not dissolving that time what you're going to do you're going to take the weight of this particular remaining one very interesting so approximately what is the maximum mass of the salt that can be dissolved in 100 ml of water you can find out to find out you have to first understand earlier we took exactly 100 g salt and you can understand what is the balanced salt right so that mean you can get an answer what is this if it is 100 and this particular around 60 you can come to a conclusion this will be around 40 grams am i right okay let's see whether my guess is right that is right that is the dissolved in 100 ml water quantity at 20 degrees celsius the maximum amount of sodium chloride that will dissolve in 100 grams of water is 36 grams they are telling if the room temperature is 20 degrees celsius the maximum amount of sodium chloride that will dissolve in 100 grams of water is 36 i came very close 40 and 36 so that will say is very clearly that above 36 it will not dissolve above 36 it will not dissolve that's the maximum rate that's a quite an interesting understanding am i right so 36 is the one the answer for our question okay now we came to know what exactly can dissolve in 100 ml of water when we're talking about salt now the question is is the amount of other com- components that dissolve in the same volume of water the same let's talk about another component no it's not salt what about sugar is the sugar same or is something else same to investigate this conduct the following activity we are going to do that one Now for that we are now this time not that we are taking a beaker calcium hydroxide we are using and a glass rod so earlier experiment we were using sodium chloride which is we took 100 grams here the calcium hydroxide we are taking only 10 grams of calcium hydroxide at the laboratory wow now what we going to do we are going to do the same thing taking a 100 ml of water to beaker and dissolving calcium hydroxide in it why adding a very small amount at a time we are dissolving it finally stop the addition of solid when no more calcium hydroxide dissolves in the solution and weigh the remaining solid that is what approximately what is the maximum mass of calcium hydroxide that can be dissolved in 100 ml liter of water we can understand by taking the weight of this particular remaining because 10 grams we added remaining is this so dissolved is what the one which is went inside that water that is right now you can understand a very good thing in this chart silver nitrate when we are talking about just like the experiment we did for sodium chloride and calcium hydroxide silver nitrite is got that is a solute name i'm talking about can in room temperature 25 degrees celsius in 100 g or 100 ml of water silver nitrate is s- got the solubility for the 245 grams right sodium hydroxide 80 sucrose 70 when you see this chart very closely every solute got a different solubility as per their components you see that one very clearly sodium chloride 36 potassium chloride 35 so it's differ from things to things now my next question is okay fine these are all happening for 25 degrees celsius what about we are increasing the temperature that's what they are talking about in the next instant okay they say repeat activity 3.16 and 3.17 that sodium chloride and sodium chloride and what we did for the second one, calcium hydroxide yes using 100 ml of hot water now this time they are taking hot water about 80 degrees celsius earlier we did not talk about yes 
hot water we were talking about, the cold water or normal water. Now, see whether the dissolved mass of the solute change and it would be observed. So, you will see a clear change that hot water and the cold water has different kind of a solubilities. That means, it would be observed that a great amount of solute dissolves at a high temperature than it does in an equivalent volume of water at room temperature. That is good and you can observe it very nicely at home also. Like when you are taking a hot water and putting sugar and dissolve it and when just take normal water and put the sugar and dissolve. Which one is dissolving quickly? Yes, it is hot water. That means hot water dissolves quickly than the cold water. Now, the solubility of a solute at a given temperature can be defined as the mass of that solute which dissolves in 100 grams of the solvent at a certain temperature. That is what the definition says. For example, 25 degrees Celsius, the solubility of magnesium chloride in water is 53 grams. At the same temperature, solubility of potassium sulfate in water is 12 grams. We came to know that, right? If you are looking at this chart once again, post this chart and see each and every solute got different solubility for the 100 milliliter of water at the room temperature 25 degrees Celsius. It was an interesting session that we learned and we came to know, we definitely came to know solutions and solubility. What is about solutions and solubility? I'm going to meet you in another beautiful session. Until then, bye-bye and take care of yourself.